Brilliant. Thank you all for coming today. I'm Daryl Woodhouse. I'm your guest speaker. Um, I wear a couple of hats. On one hand, I'm a professional speaker, or trying to be one. Um, on another hand, um, I'm very experienced as a, a corporate leader and trainer from my earlier corporate career. And then on the other hand, for the last 10 years, um, I've been uh, starting and scaling up my own business, um, which has um, several brands functioning within that company. So um, I've got a little bit of experience of um, what it's like to start and build up a business. And um, I hope to share some of that with you today because um, I know business is tough it's, and it's not easy to be successful, um, especially to be successful with minimal stress without burning out and without working really long hours. Um, if you'd like to find out more about me, um, you've got my website address here. As long as you spell my name right, I'm quite easy to find on other social media platforms as well. And um, after this short talk, which will be about 20 minutes, um, you can then join me in the Q&A session afterwards. I'll be very happy to network and take any questions uh, that you might have individually uh, or for any other particular advice you might be looking for around the topics uh, that I'm going to be talking about. Um, so before we go into um, a bit of a story to highlight the importance of a smart working productivity skills, taking care of ourselves and um, making sure we don't burn out. Um, I just want to talk about achievement. Achievement means different things to different people. Um, for me personally, um, I've had some uh, amazing achievements that I'm really proud of. Um, at age 26, I achieved status as in a national role for a FTSE 100 corporate, um, responsible for a very large team and a large profit and loss account responsibility. Um, I achieved multi-million revenues within the first few years of starting my first business. No easy feat, um, and uh, and, it, and it was it was uh, it was still is something I'm really proud of. I'm also one of the youngest executive business school lecturers in the world. Something else I'm very pleased about. Now um, we haven't got much time today, so these are just you know just a couple of examples of things I've achieved that I'm proud of um, as part of a key message and story that I want to share with you to help you learn from. So a lot of people say to me, Daryl, how do you how did you achieve so many things in your in your corporate career and um, how did you become successful as an entrepreneur, as a business owner? Well, two key things. The first one, I've always been really good at working smart. I've been really good at time management, productivity, efficiency. Um, Sorry, someone a bit of background noise there. If you don't mind muting out, please, that would be awesome. Um, I do get distracted very, distracted very easily. <laughs> um, so the first of the two key things to this achievement is working smart, productivity, getting a lot of stuff done in a small amount of time. The second thing is I worked too much. I worked hard for too many hours, for too many days a week, for too many years. And that's not a great way to achieve things. And I'll share why in a moment. So two key things that help me achieve a lot of things. Working really smart, being good at productivity, time management. Number two, not such a good way of achieving. I was working too many hours for too many days a week for too many years. And from my earlier corporate career, I was just trained and conditioned to work long hours. I still remember one of my corporate bosses. Um, he could see that I was tired and he knew I'd been working long hours uh, for, for quite a long period. Um, and he was just checking in on me. He said, am I coping OK? Is is the job too and the pressure too much for me? Um, and uh, and I said, it's not the pressure, but, um, you know, I, I am I am finding it tough to, to work such long hours and to keep going, to keep exceeding my targets and achieving these great results that I am. And he said, well, look, if it's too much, we can uh, move you into a more junior role. You can go backwards. Um, however, if you if you really want to provide for your family and if you really want to keep moving up the career ladder, um, you've got to suck up the stress. You've just got to keep going. You've got to make it work. Um, and and I, I trusted him. I looked up to him. He was effectively at that time. He was a bit of a role model for me, so I carried on. Um, and I now carried that long work in the hour culture um, and that always being on um culture i carried that into starting my first business in 2012 and what's what are you missing out on if you're working really long hours well 
you're missing out on time with your family, time to relax, time to do really great fitness, time to eat well, time to enjoy life, time to spend with your friends, to travel more, enjoy the finer things, because life sadly can be too short, as many of you will know. And what was happening for many years earlier in my corporate career and in which I carried into starting my first business and working really hard to make that success to scale it up I was burning out and my body had been telling me for years my our bodies are so clever my bodies were giving me lots of physical signs and um, that I was doing too much they didn't, didn't like what I was doing what I was putting my body and my mind through but I carried on I ignored them and I felt that because I was fairly young, I felt that um, because I, I did some fitness, because I ate fairly healthily, I felt that I would be fine and I'd keep these symptoms at bay and stop them from getting worse. Um, but I was wrong. And in 2016, something happened in my private life, a, a tragedy that can happen to any one of us at any time. That tragedy led on to several other um, uh, events traumas and combined with not being particularly well from burning out over many years not looking after myself properly working too much it, it tipped me over the edge into an abyss of a major burnout now don't worry if your screen's gone black that is deliberate um having a major burnout it was it was initially it was really lonely it was a very dark place it was not a nice place to be, and it's not something I would wish on anyone. All of the um, health issues that I had while I was burning out, they got a lot worse. Um, I couldn't sleep. I was chronic, I had chronic fatigue. I was exhausted. I was literally crawling to get out of bed every morning. My motivation, my energy had gone. I didn't want to get up for work. I didn't want to keep going. And there's a whole load of more, which if you want to know more, um, we, can, we can discuss some of that in the Q&A. But hearing some more of the detail of how bad it got, is, it's, it's not for everyone. It's not quite nice to hear. It's not nice to hear. And actually, for me, it's not nice to talk about. Um, so I'll save that for later for those of you that want it. Um, initially, I was really embarrassed about the situation I was in and about, I was embarrassed about how I, how I was feeling, how unwell I was mentally and physically. So I didn't talk to anyone. Um, I didn't talk to anyone for months. So I stayed in this really depressive, anxious, miserable state for months. When I finally did speak to someone, a, a close friend, I was overwhelmed by the amount of understanding and support that, that I had around me. And then I opened up to a few more people and found out that actually it was quite common um, to have a burnout or to react where I had to um, this personal uh, tragedy, tragedy and, and traumas. Um, and my, my next step was then to go and get professional help and go and talk to a therapist. And they helped me understand how everything from the source, how it all happened, what the causes were, so that we could um, understand and plan to prevent this stuff happening again and to build myself back up again. Um, and there's actually some really good that comes out of this story because I learned the hard way how to live life and how to do business better. And that's where I'm going to share some hopefully helpful advice to you today. Now, just to give you some other statistics and, and insights on the impact and the commonality of burnout and overworking, because I know what it's like as an entrepreneur. I know how many entrepreneurs um, overwork and they, they're, they're so passionate or we are so passionate about our businesses and we're so determined and ambitious to make them work that we do put long hours in and we almost see it as a hobby or as a child. So if we're doing something we love, yeah, it's fine to work 68 hours, 80 hours a week. Well, I'm trying to show you that actually it's not and there is a better way where you can actually work a lot less and achieve more than you were previously or what you are now from working long hours. Long hours is counterproductive. Um, a couple of examples here. 12 million people in the UK have, have had and experienced job burnout. From some of my own research over the last few months, 90% uh, of people that I've spoken to, that I've researched, have a medium to high risk burnout concern about themselves, 
and people around them, people in their teams, people in their household, friends, family. 39% of people surveyed confessed overworking big time. 44% confessed overworking sometimes. So most of you listening today statistically will relate to this, either for yourselves or someone that's close to you, either at work or at home. And we have a duty to have each other's back and look out for each other and share best practice, help each other get the best from life and from work. We're only just starting to study um, and understand from research the longer term implications of overworking. Here's a couple of examples on the right of your screen. Two of those three I've experienced personally from my burnout. Not nice things to deal with. Worst, other examples of worst case scenarios, burnout and overworking, and I've seen it in myself and in many others, sadly. It can break families permanently. It can lead to divorce, suicide, or before suicide, suicidal thoughts, suicide attempts, misery. And overall, an unfulfilled life, business and career potential. So picking it up now into more positive stuff, you know, I, I learned the hard way that less is more. Um, and I decided to um, adjust my work because my first business in 2012 um, and that, that core brand, um, I've built up a team, an organization that helps entrepreneurs, small business owners, scale up entrepreneurs, helps them to achieve their goals in work and in life. We provide mentoring, non-exec guidance. We help build board teams. We help with talent mapping, growing sales, fundraising. This is what we do. We help companies to, to do this and to do it more easily and to fill the skills and knowledge and experience gaps that many entrepreneurs, including as I first did, you know, we have these gaps. And the sooner we fill them, the sooner we get the right advice and support network around us, the sooner we can fulfill our potential without burning out as well. Um, now, when I had my burnout in 2016, as I was figuring out how I was going to rebuild my life and get back to a better, healthier place, um, a key part of that um, was like taking what I'd learned and channeling it positively to raise awareness and help others, to raise awareness of burnout, the dangers of overworking, and to share how I discovered that working four days a week, and I'm talking seven to eight hours a day for those four days a week, which was more than half the hours I've been working for years, all the way back into my corporate career. I was working half as much as ever before when I came back from my burnout. I was happier, healthier than ever, it's me with a bit of a tan in the summer a couple of years ago. Um, and the best bit is that despite working more than half as much as I had been before, I was achieving more in my work. My business was growing quicker, more easily. We were attracting bigger, better clients and opportunities. And I was like, what? This is amazing. And, you know, I have to share this advice and, 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 bring this into my speaking and to help other people with this. And I built a whole methodology, an e-learning program and a mobile app around this as well to help equip others with the knowledge, experience and the tools to achieve more whilst working less, having a greater life-work balance, whilst preventing the chance of you having a major burnout, which some people don't come back from. Some families, some marriages, some businesses don't come back from them. And as an example of uh, one of the ways I innovated as well to then deal with another tricky situation when COVID affected our business revenues uh, significantly, um, I used that time to um, future pandemic proof our company and uh, leverage digital more. And one of the things we did is this mobile app, which shows um, entrepreneurs, overworkers, hard workers, exactly how effectively they're using their time at work and then helping them create a really simple one page transformation planner with a bit of in app coaching and gamification uh, to take that insight and change some habits, 
create some new um, uh, methods, techniques, use some new tools to get a lot more done in less time and, be, and maximize our potential at work and in life. Now there's four core pillars to the methodology that I've created. Um, and, and I want you to write this down. Um, if you'd like a copy of the slides, by the way, you can just message me anytime um, and I'll send these over. Um, but, but in the meantime, please do make some key notes for yourself. Um, these four key pillars are really important to helping you get that balance and to achieve this uh, you know, greater success without burning out um, whilst working less, having better time management and focus. You've got strategy and planning skills, massively underestimated in business, massively underestimated. And because work and, and, and life can be so busy um, as entrepreneurs, for example, we typically don't make enough time to do strategy as best as we can. But getting it done properly and then planning how we're going to implement that strategy and create an environment for success, making time for that and sticking to it and being consistent and getting all of the team on board, getting all of your mentors on board, your support network. Um, it, it, it saves so many mistakes. It saves money in the long run. It saves hassle, stress, burnout. It's so important to get much better at strategy and planning. Secondly, it's productivity, massively underestimated skill. It's also linked to time management, decision-making skills, prioritization skills, how to avoid procrastination. And then there's life work balance, and having routine for that, which is something that I teach. And the fourth, but equally important pillar of the life work effect is well-being. If we're not taking great care of ourselves, we can't be the best for our business, for our families, and for others, for our teams. Got to look after yourselves first. And I think about um, when we're allowed to fly more freely, when the cabin crew do their safety instruction, one of the first things that they say is, in the event of an emergency, please put your own oxygen mask on first. If you don't do that, you, you could be dead and you can't help anyone if you're dead. There's a really important message there. By taking great self-care of ourselves, we are much stronger, more resilient, happier, healthier, more productive to take care of our businesses, to take care of our families, to help more people. Now, when you proactively work across each of the four pillars in your life and in your work, as I've experienced, it really does lead to happier lives and greater work performance. Now, here's some stats. So it's not just me telling you this. Microsoft Japan, if you haven't heard about this, they reduced employee work hours by 20% in a week. And their productivity went up by 40%. It's a no-brainer. Employees can be happier working less, more energy, happier, healthier, sleeping better, more time for fitness, hobbies, and employee, employers will be happier. Business owners will be happier because employees are happier and more loyal and stay with them longer, but they're performing better. They're contributing better results. Other examples of um, the power of productivity when we really nail it, multitasking, which so many of us are guilty of, it can hurt your productivity by 40%. And another angle on why we should all get better at productivity and make time for it is that employees who exercise their strengths daily are 8% more productive and six times more likely to be engaged. Now, being more productive, being more engaged, it creates great, much greater energy. Um, it has a massive impact over time with the quality of our work and the quantity of it. Some other things um, to, to leave you with as we start to wrap up this talk before we go over to the Q&A session. Um, thinking about that third pillar in the life work effect, life work balance. Think about what the perfect week might look like. There's no such thing as perfection in many cases. So it's not about achieving perfect week every week, but by mapping it out for yourself, mapping out what it would look like, what it means to you, you can then create healthier, more productive habits at home and at work to get as close to that perfect week as possible and all the benefits that come with it, being happier, being healthier, being more innovative, being better at decision making and, and prioritizing skills, um, partly from less brain fog. 
have a look at some of these examples on the screen of what a perfect week could look like for you and for your team and for your family. And then here's some more. So make some notes in this or you'll capture the slides for me later um, and, and take some time out, grab a coffee, um, give yourself some, some space. Think what can you do differently with your life work balance, with your, your crazy schedule? What can you do to achieve some of this stuff? Create a bit of a mini action plan about it. You also need to look at the, the barriers. What are the barriers to achieving the life work effect, to optimizing our success? And our happiness with those four life work effect pillars and just to pick out one as an example here time gremlins and um, our time is so precious and we give it away so easily it's 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 human nature it's very common and easy to do that but we don't get that time back so staying on the front foot being proactive much more more regularly on how we can use our time better and how we can say no more often is, is absolutely crucial. And just a second example to highlight from this slide, um, weaknesses. We spend too much time emphasizing what are our weaknesses and how can we fix or mitigate them. That's really good and important. But what about our strengths? So many successful leaders and entrepreneurs are not fully leveraging their strengths. Just because we're good at them today doesn't mean we will be tomorrow or next month. What are we doing to use those strengths more often what are we doing to use those strengths more frequently? Um, so more frequently and more often. Number two, what are we doing to use those strengths more time overall? And number three, how can we get better at those strengths? How can we drive continual improvement and have a much better balance of protecting ourselves against weaknesses, but also making ourselves stronger, more strategic, better leaders, more productive, um, if you've liked some of the stuff I've shared today, and if you want more practical guidance advice, um, last week I published a, a new ebook. Um, it explains a little bit more about the four pillars, and it's packed with more than 50 simple, small, practical habits that you can start to implement any any time to achieve a greater score against the life work effect and to achieve more whilst working less with less chance of burning out. Um, so I'd encourage you to come and uh, download it from my website, darylwoodhouse.com. Um, and if you'd like more insights from some of the research and the studies I've shared um, or talked about earlier, if you, if you want to know more about the four-day week and examples of how to make that happen, I'm sharing some of my research um, and, and resources with you here in this slide. Um, and now as we jump over to the Q&A um, area, um, you know, have a think about this. Write this down for yourself. And do this now, do this later today. What will you do differently from hearing this talk, from being part of Upstart up today? Whatever best practices and inspiration have you gained? Um, and then even from either my talk or other talks that you've heard today, if you can just decide on one new habit, one improvement you can make per week and do that for four weeks and stick with it, be consistent, be focused, be self-disciplined, you can actually achieve a real um, transformation just from one new habit a week for four weeks um, and my prediction is um, as it's happened to me and it's happened to many of my clients over the last few years um, once you've done that for four weeks it you see the impact you see the results on your life on your business on your success and it becomes quite addictive in a good way and then you're like right okay now I want to add two new habits a week for the next four weeks um, and then we've, <laughs> um, and, and that's just a great place to be because you're going to see the results keep coming. You know, and remember, in summary, life's too short. Um, you know, don't stress and strain for years and years trying to save up for an amazing pension. Have a balance. Enjoy and live your life now. But work much smarter. Get more done in less time from really being strategic, really carefully managing how you use that precious time and that, that limited resource that we have. Make time to improve your productivity and make better use of it all. Thanks so much. I'm Daryl Woodhouse. Um, I really hope you enjoyed that session. And I am now going to jump over to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the Q and A session. And I'd love to talk to some of you there, um, either today or, or even another time. You can email me 
and uh, yeah, I'd love to support as many of you as possible in taking the questions. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.